Welcome to the first video in our PyQt6 tutorial series. In this video, we'll be talking about PyQt6 as a GUI library in Python and how we can use it, how we can create GUI applications with it, what makes it such a good GUI library, and why I would recommend it over some other libraries uh, in Python, because Python has more than just one GUI library. Okay, so we'll talk a bit about that as well in this tutorial, like which one is really you know better and what are the pros and cons of each. All right, so yeah, PyQt6 is a massive library. It has dozens of widgets, and there's so many that we can't even hope to cover all of them, but we'll cover as many as we can, okay? Some of them are pretty niche, so it's not even worth you know, talking about those much, uh, but yeah. So there's a bunch of other stuff besides the widgets. Oh, and by the way, a widget is an individual GUI element, like a button, that's a widget or a slider, that's a widget, or a file dialog, that's a widget, okay? These are important terms to keep in mind because we'll be using them a lot later on, all right? There's also the uh, system of signals in PyQt6. We'll make a whole video on that, it's very important. And then there's also the layout managers. That's also very important because when you have a lot of widgets on your screen, when you have a lot of GUI elements on your screen, you need a way to position them. You need them to be properly placed, you need them to be flexible, so if the screen resizes, you can, you know, the widgets expand automatically or act accordingly, all right? So there's so many things in PYQ86, okay? This is gonna be a very long tutorial series, and I do hope you guys will follow it from start to finish, all right? Because there's gonna be, I assure you, a lot of great content in it, all right? So without further ado, let's begin. Now, uh, we'll, we'll be using PyQt6, which is the latest version of PyQt. Uh, it was released in 2021. Before 2021, PyQt5 was being used. Okay, it was the latest edition. And even still, people, most people are probably still on PyQt5 at the time of this video. But um, PyQt6 is what people are going to be using in the future. So it's important to know, uh, you know how to use it. There aren't really that many differences though. There's just a few minor differences really that you need to be aware of and we'll talk about that later on as well. All right, so without any further ado, let's begin. The first thing I'll do is begin setting up my imports. PYQt6 has a lot of sub modules within it. So importing you know, the correct classes from it can be a bit annoying, okay? It's not like take enter or something where you just make one import and you're done, okay? It's more complicated than, than that. But don't worry. Uh, I'll teach you guys the meaning of each module and it'll be pretty easy by the end of it. So the first thing I'll do is from PYQt6, from their Qt widgets module, I'm going to import a few basic um, widgets. One is QApplication. QApplication is for our GUI application, okay? You won't ever see this on the screen, but it's just something that's there in the background. Then there's Q widget, all right? Then there's also Q push button. We'll be using these in today's video. We'll also use Q label. And we'll talk about these soon, don't worry. And we'll also use Q line edit. We'll use three, these three widgets in today's video. And we'll also use a layout manager called Vbox layout and Q grid layout. All right, now you might have noticed that this import statement is getting pretty long. All right, so what we'll do is a handy trick I learned that you can just move this on multiple lines. All right, it's pretty handy this way, this way of importing with the brackets. Okay, so you might want to use this instead. All right, and then we import this, the sys module. Okay, and we'll make one more import actually from PYQt6 dot qt core import qt okay um yeah hold on sorry all right so here are our imports all right now what i want to do is begin creating our gui window our gui application okay so i'm going to create a custom class and this custom class is going to import from q widget okay Q widget, um, basically we're using a widget to make our window, okay? We're using the Q widget base class, which all the other classes derive from. Uh, this is, again, just extra info for those of you who are fully aware of inheritance and how hierarchies work, 
Okay, so we're inheriting from Q widget here and we're defining our window here as a kind of a Q widget. You might wonder what the benefit of this is. And well, the benefit is that we get to use a bunch of cool functions and stuff that I'll show you later on. Okay, just remember to include this line of code. What it does is initializes the constructor of the inherited class, Q widget. Okay, and this is important. If you don't do it, it you're, you'll run into an error, okay, and uh, you won't even get past the compilation stage. Okay, so just include it. So what kind of functions does this give us access to? Well, it gives us access to stuff like set layout, all right, that we'll use in today's video as well. It gives us access to a whole bunch of stuff really. Um, resize, for example. It gives us access to set geometry. We'll talk about all these soon, all right? But we're still not actually done, okay? We can't run this code and a GUI window will not pop up because we haven't actually written the application code. We haven't actually created our object for this class. So what I'll do is go down here, app is equal to Q application, okay? And this can be either an empty list, okay? But people commonly use sys.argv, all right? Even though uh, we won't be using this in our series and people generally don't use it, but we'll leave it here just in case anyway, because people do. Okay, so what it actually does is that you can use it to pass in command line arguments. So if you run this program from the command prompt, from a terminal, then you can, you can just type the name of the program. And then after that, you can type in a parameter or two and it'll get passed into this Q application. Okay, so yeah, that's just some extra info for you guys. And here I'll create the window object from our window class. Then I'm going to do window.show and this displays our GUI window because if I didn't do this, our code would run, but we wouldn't see the GUI window because by default it's hidden, okay? And uh, also some extra info, you can use hide to hide it, okay? All right, so one last line, and that's app.execute. This executes our GUI application, all right? And executes the PYQD fix event system, the signal system, and all of that. This is very important, okay? So these four are like our base code, and we're gonna be copy pasting this in all of our other uh, GUI applications, okay? Don't even think about this here. Everything you see here right now is just like a very boilerplate kind of code you'll be using this everywhere, okay? The imports will change a bit, but the general outline of this code will remain the same, okay? You won't really be, ma be making any changes here, all right? So just to overview, these are our imports, and this is our GUI window that we're gonna be creating widgets in soon, okay? And this is just our Q application, our window, we ma we're making it show, we're executing our application now, okay? And there's just one last thing. This needs to be exited properly. Okay, now don't think about it too much, but basically you just need to do this. Use the sys module and use the exit fu function and wrap it around this app.execute. This ensures that it terminates properly. Okay, otherwise there could be some issues. All right, that's it. So if I run this now, we'll actually see a GUI window pop up, but it's just gonna be uh, blank, I think. Okay, that was larger than I expected. I guess this is the default size for a PYQD6 window. Okay, so let's just uh, begin customizing it. And okay, hold on, I, I ran that twice. I pressed the button twice. That's why it, it ran twice. All right, so let me show you how we can customize it. All right, so I have this little icon over here as well. I brought this in so that we could, uh, you know, add the icon onto the window and just take one more look at it. Okay, what I want to customize is first of all the size. Uh, I want to make it smaller. I want to customize that. You see this icon? This is the default icon and I want to change it. And I also want to change this uh, text over here. It says Python. Uh, I don't want it to say that, so I'll change it right now. So the first thing I'll do is change the size. Okay, 300 by 300. And then I'm going to, what should I do? Change the window. Uh, set window icon, okay? Oh, and I need the Q icon now, and Q icon is from the PYQD6 QTGUI module, 
Okay, I know this is a bit confusing, but eventually you'll get the hang of it. So just make this import. All right, and now I'm gonna do icon.jpg. Now let's change the title of our window. So we'll do set window title. And there are a bunch of other functions here that you can see by the way. And these are all functions available to us because we imported from, oh, sorry, inherited from QWidget. Okay, so this is, these are all functions belonging to QWidget. All right, so I'll just do set window title and change it to quarters legacy. And now we can run our code and we can see that we have the quarters legacy text over here and we have the quarters legacy icon. And great, this window is now customized to how we want it. Now, the only thing that's left is for us to put in some widgets. So in today's video, we'll be making a login form, all right? It's a pretty small GUI application. There isn't much to it, it's not very complex, and it'll give us a good opportunity to show off a few features that PYQD6 has, all right? So let's begin. The first thing I'll do is set up a layout, all right? Uh, I'll create a layout over here using the grid layout, okay? Q grid layout. And the reason for using layouts is because we'll be using several widgets. If you're just creating a few of them, then you can use them individually, but using several widgets, especially when positioning is important, you need to use layouts, all right? And normally, though, I will show you a different way. It's called absolute positioning, when you specifically define the location where you want a widget to appear, all right? So that's absolute positioning. It's not flexible, and it won't, you know, it won't adapt when the window resizes, unlike layouts. So there are its pros and cons. You could disable resizing, that way absolute positioning would work fine, but you know, you know we'll, we'll talk about all of that soon. So here we have the layout, and I'm gonna set the layout of the window to this layout. All right, and now let's begin creating some widgets. The first thing I'll do is create a label. We'll, we'll call it label one, and this is gonna be created from a queue label. And the text of this is going to be username, all right, because we're making uh, a login form. The second parameter is going to be self. Actually, not, no, no, no. So let me just explain this anyways. But if we weren't using a layout, if I wanted to create this label without the layout, what I would do is this, all right? I would do in the parent parameter, I would pass in self, where self refers to our window, all right? And this is the it's kind of the regular approach, all right? But I'm not gonna use this because it's not very efficient, all right? But it's something you should know, all right? The other approach we'll do is, uh, let me show you. So over here, we'll set the layout to the window, right? Using the set layout function. So what I'm gonna do now is add to the layout the label, all right? So basically the hierarchy is as follows. The window has the layout inside of it, and the layout has the widget inside of it, okay? So that's the hierarchy. So you always need to tell the GUI application, you need to tell PYQD6 what is a child of what, all right? So normally, when not using layouts, we wouldn't have this code, okay? So we need to specify it using the parent parameter, all right? Okay, but if we're using layouts, then we just need to use this, okay? So yeah, there's still two parameters that we need to add to this function, and that's because we're using the grid layout, and the grid layout takes two additional parameters, one of them called a row, and one of them called column. And basically, these are needed because the grid layout creates a grid of rows and columns. So you need to specify where are you adding the widget, in which row and which column. So for example, this is the first widget, right? So I'll add it into the zero and zero column, okay? A column in a row. So that's the very first cell. I'm gonna copy this over here, as you can see, create label two, change this to password, and put this one row down, okay? And this is actually gonna be pretty easy from now on. I'm just gonna create uh, the input now, input one is equal to Q line edit, and this is gonna be self. Oh, wait, sorry, we're not using that anymore. 
all right so layout dot add widget and these each of these widgets actually have a lot of customizations that we can apply but we'll be talking about those customizations later on in the series and we'll, everything I'm talking about right now will have a whole video on it because trust me you may think that you're understanding what's going on right now but there's actually so much more behind the scenes there's so many more customizations that we can apply okay and and we'll go into that in separate dedicated videos for each concept all right so I'm gonna just add in input one then do zero and one copy this over and then put this in one one all right change that over there change that over there and let me just run our code to see what we're getting currently great all right good um, I'm just gonna remove the resize now we don't need that anymore because with layouts typically we just uh, let them go with their default sizes all right so this is the default size for the widgets and the window is going to expand as the size of the widget increases all right I'm going to customize it a bit set some margins set content margins and 20 20 20 20 should be good enough this will add in some padding okay and now I'm going to uh, I'm going to create a button now Q push button and no parameters actually wait sorry we need to pass in the text called submit then I'm going to do layout dot add widget and we'll pass in button in here and this can be somewhere on the second row and the first column all right um, the button is a bit too big though so what I'll do is just change the size button dot set fixed size or let's just fix the width the height is the height is perfectly fine so I'll just change this to 50 and that makes us a smaller button and I want this to be on that side not 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 on the left I want it to be on the right so what I'll do in this parameter I'll do qt dot alignment flag dot align right okay and these are a bunch of alignments that you can see over here I'll do align right and this will align it to the right so this is our login form it's small it's simple and it's compact all right so let's just rig things up a bit I'm going to use the signal system and connect the signal called clicked on the button to a function what is that function though let's define it so I'll create this function called display and in here I'm going to print out a few details okay and this is actually where I need to go and use self over here otherwise I won't be able to use them in other functions so yeah actually I just need to do this on the Q line edits but okay fine we can do it on the labels as well we, we may need that later on so I'm going to do self dot input one dot text that's going to give us the text on the first input box now let's do self dot input two dot text and this will give us the input on the second one and let me just go back here and connect this function to our button and now let's run our code and there's our window so if I go over here type quarters legacy and type in the password one two three four five and click submit it's going to print out quarters legacy one two three four five so this is it this is our simple GUI window we've made a login page and we can submit this data and we can also do some validation checks if we wanted to all right so that's up to you there's uh, I think we've covered quite a bit of concepts over here we've covered layouts briefly we talked about signals briefly okay signals are events basically like button clicks or text changes or hover changes stuff like that so yeah these are all individual topics that are worth entire videos which is which is exactly why we have entire tutorial series we'll, we'll be making a video on each button so do check those out okay it's going to be a long series layout management and all that so we'll end the tutorial over here i hope you guys subscribe to the channel leave a like leave a comment let me know what you thought is there something in pyqt6 that you want to see is there something you don't understand something that you want me to make a video on do let me know all right i'll see you guys in a later video